What is going on everybody? Welcome to part eight of the Neural Networks From Scratch videos. In the previous video, we learned how to calculate the categorical cross entropy as our metric for loss. And in this video, what we wanna talk about is how to incorporate that into our sort of overall neural network framework that we've been building in this series. So when we go to apply it, there's a few changes that we need to make. We need to make it a little bit more dynamic as well as address one of the hurdles that you're going to find uh, when you go to actually run this. So let's get to it. Up to this point with calculating loss, we've only considered calculating this categorical cross entropy from the softmax output of a single sample at a time. But in reality, we'll be feeding in multiple samples at a time or a batch of data, which will return to us a batch of softmax outputs. From here, we'd also have a batch of targets, so let's imagine our three classes are dog, cat, or human. Let's first consider a scenario where our targets are sparse, as opposed to where our targets are one-hot encoded. So imagine that our batch of targets are that the first sample is a dog, the second sample is a cat, and the third sample is a cat. That would mean then that the dog class, represented as a single sparse value, would just be a zero. The cat target would be represented as a 1, and the final cat target for that third sample would also be a 1. So this would be our sparse target vector for the softmax outputs. So to visualize how they line up, that first value corresponds to the first sample's softmax outputs, and the 0 means that the target class was a 0. So to get the confidences for this class, we just grab the value at the index of 0 of the first of the softmax outputs which is a 0.7. For the second value in the class target vector, we have a class of one. So we would be interested in the confidence of the element at the index of one for the second softmax output vector. This is a 0.5 in this case. And then finally for the third sample in that batch, the target was a one. So we would again match that to the softmax output confidence of 0.9 in that third sequence. Now that we know how these targets line up to the confidence values that we're interested in, how might we program this in pure Python? So one way might just be to zip these two lists together, then iterate the target index and the softmax distribution where the desired confidence value would be the value at the index of the target index in that softmax distribution. That said, we're going to incorporate NumPy now, which is faster and more concisely implemented. So we can actually get rid of the zipping and the iteration, and instead we can do all of this exact same thing in one line, since the softmax outputs is now a NumPy array with NumPy array properties, and the output will now be a vector. So what's happening in this last line might be a little confusing or hazy for some of you. Uh, so let's talk about it for a moment. So because softmax outputs is now a NumPy array, we can actually index this NumPy array in a variety of ways thanks to NumPy. So the way that we're doing it here is we can actually pass lists of ind indices that we are interested in and then it's by dimension. So this will be at the you know first dimension, what are the indices that we're interested in? And then the second dimension, what are the indices that we're interested in? So the 0, 1, 2, this is your 0, this is your 1, this is your 2, and then class targets is right here, 0, 1, 1. So again, that's going to be 0 here, and then 1, 1. So uh, if, if that's kind of confusing to you, I would suggest maybe just kind of tinker around with this. So for example, if we replace class targets with just 0, 0, 0, it's going to take the 0th element um, from each of these. So 0 0.7, 1, and then 0. Uh, zero 02. Uh, but in our case, we're going to use class targets because that's these are the values that we're actually interested in. So it becomes just a really nice, concise way uh, to get at the exact values that we're interested in in one clean line. Now, rather than hard coding the range of however long our values are, we can actually just use the Python range of the length of the softmax outputs. And as we learned in the previous video, categorical cross entropy in the case of classification with neural networks simplifies to being the negative log of the target class's confidence. So we just wrap this in a negative np.log, the resulting values being our losses. From here, we calculate the loss for this batch as just the mean of the losses. And then with that, you might be thinking, hey, we're done, right? And you'd be wrong, because we're eventually going to hit a problem with this, and that problem is zero. The negative log of zero is infinite, so we have a slight issue. Now, if the confidence for the correct class is a zero, 
I suppose you could argue, well, it is infinitely wrong, but it's kind of a problem for us. So if, for example, if we wrap this in negative np dot log, and we check our results, right? Everything's looking pretty good. You get a higher loss if the, the further away you are. Um, so for example, if we decrease this to 0.2, we can see the loss definitely increased to that 1.6. But if we make it a 0.0, .0 uh, we, we do get a warning, it does still run, um, but we see that the loss is actually infinite. Um, and this wouldn't necessarily be the end of the world because that's still, it's not, not necessarily wrong. But the problem is when we go to wrap this in a uh, numpy.mean. So as soon as you throw in one infinity, <laughs> everything just dies out <laughs> because now the the average the batch loss is also infinite so just one time you get a zero and it's it's game over for you one option that we have to handle for this is to clip the values in the range by some fairly insignificant amount so for example 1e negative 7 and then we're no longer dealing with infinity and we want to clip because we don't just simply want to shave off from the low end of a confidence uh, and cause some sort of bias. So we're actually going to clip 1e negative 7 from 0. So we'll start the range at 1e negative 7 all the way up to 1 minus 1e negative 7. Thus, we will just simply clip all of these predicted values with numpy.clip to ensure that we don't wind up with this infinity problem. So we'll start by defining a common loss class. So we'll call this class loss. And in this loss class, we're going to have a define calculate. And the calculate is going to take self, it will take output and y. So output is the output from the model, y is the um, intended target values. Inside the calculate, what we want to do is we want to get those sample losses. So we're going to say sample losses equals uh, self dot forward. And the forward method here will, will pass output in Y. So the forward method is going to vary depending on which type of loss you are actually using. Uh, so that will vary, but all of the losses are going to need to calculate loss. So they will share this kind of calculate method here. So that's our sample losses. Then we want to, again, that will be like a vector of values. So what we want to do now is data loss or batch loss uh, is going to be the numpy mean of the sample losses. And then finally, we will just simply return the data loss. So in this case, um, we want to define the forward method for at least one uh, loss function that we intend to use, which is going to be categorical cross entropy. So just below this class, we'll define another class and we will turn the page of our book. And this is going to be called claw, class, class loss underscore categorical cross entropy. Uh, this is going to inherit from the base loss class. Now we just need to define our forward method that will take self and then y prediction and y true. So again, y pred, these are going to be the values from the uh, neural network. y true, these are the target training values. So uh, first thing that we're going to do is we need to know what is the total length. So we're going to say samples equals len of really arguably, whoops, arguably either of those, but we will go with y pred. Now what we want to do is uh, clip these values. So y pred clipped is equal to numpy.clip and we want to clip the y prediction to be between 1e negative 7 so a number close to 0 but not quite 0 for infinity purposes and then to be not biased we're going to do 1 minus 1e negative 7. So uh, once we've got the clip done, the next thing that we need to consider is sometimes people will pass targets that are either in the form of scalar values. So class one, class zero, class one, class one, or it will be one hot encoded. So it might be um, zero one. Uh, well, let's make it the same as it was above. So um, no, I had it right. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, and then one zero. And just to save myself from typing out the rest, I'm going to say like this. So in this case, you've got two samples, but they were just scalar values. In this case, you've got two samples, but they're one hot encoded values. So we want to be able to handle for both of these because it's pretty common practice that people will use one or either. It's not really any one that is more common than the other. People are kind of comfy using, using both. So you want to be able to handle uh, for whether someone has passed one or the other. So the way that we can find out which one has been passed is we can just do if len of uh, y true y true dot shape is equal to one. This means they have passed uh, scalar values. So not one hot encoded values, just true scalar class values. So in this case, we're gonna say correct confidences equals y preed clipped. And then uh, we're going to say range of samples and then y true. So let's solidify what's happening here in the correct confidences in the case where the targets are a scalar form. So the targets array is just a one dimensional array. So first you have the y pre clipped values and we're indexing those by the range of however many samples we have in the batch, which really just means we want to reference all of the samples in the batch. Along the second dimension, of the batches clipped outputs, we want to grab the index of the y true value. So this means from the zeroth sample, we grab the zeroth value. From the firstth sample, we grab the firstth value. And then from that final sample, index of two, we grab that firstth element again. Then uh, we'll come down uh, and then handle for the other possibility here, which would be L or, well, we're in the book we're saying L if, but I guess we'll we'll handle it with an if. Elif len y true dot shape uh, double equals two. So in this case, it would be a uh, one hot encoded vectors that are being passed here. If that's true, what we want to say is uh, correct underscore confidences is equal to np dot sum of y pre clipped times y true um, and that sum operation is happening on axes equals one spot check make sure i uh, didn't screw that up i think so cool so in the second case the targets y true is a two-dimensional array because it's an array of one hot encoded vectors so the length of y true dot shape is two in this case, we're going to do a sum of the clipped values multiplied by the y true array, which is that array of the one hot encoded vectors. And we're doing the sum along axes one. So what's en what ends up happening is we're multiplying each of those vectors. And so when we do that, we're multiplying each individual element at the same index in one vector with the other vector. And so what's happening here is everything winds up getting multiplied by zero except for the target class's confidence because in the one hot encoded vector, everything's a zero except for the, the target class. So summing all these together along axes one is giving us just those values that we want. So these are the two methods that we have for dynamically handling either one hot encoded vectors or scalar class values. It doesn't matter which ends up being passed here, either one will work. So that's how we can handle for the correct confidences. And then all we want to do from this point is to do negative uh, log likelihoods is equal to the negative NP dot log of correct confidences. And then we return the negative log likelihood. So once we've gotten to this point, um, these negative log likelihoods, it's going to be, again, the vector of values that comes from to here to sample losses. We take the mean, we return that data loss, that batch loss. So now what we'll do is using what we've just coded, we'll define our loss function as the loss categorical cross entropy object. We will then calculate our actual loss by saying loss function dot calculate. 
And in here again, we pass the Y prediction versus the uh, target. So the Y prediction will be whatever your final output layer was that used that softmax activation. In our case, that's activation two. So basically the output is going to be activation two dot output. And then our target was Y because that just comes from all the way up here. So this gives us our actual loss value and we can even print that out, print loss colon and then loss, we'll save that, run that. And sure enough, we get a loss of 1.0986104, which does indeed match the book. So briefly, we'd like to show a way to calculate accuracy since you'd likely be calculating accuracy in your code around this step, but we'll probably revisit accuracy later. So given your targets and your softmax outputs, you can actually calculate accuracy from here pretty easily. You can run the outputs through a numpy.argmax calculation, which will return the index value for whichever value is the greatest. You can run this np.argmax on the entirety of the softmax outputs by utilizing the axes perimeter, which notifies numpy of which axes you actually want this calculated on. And that would be one in this case, since it's a batch of these outputs. So you can then say predictions is equal to the argmax of axes one of the softmax outputs. Then we're just going to compare these two and wherever the values are equal, we have a true or a one, a match. If not, then it's a zero, we got it wrong. And then we would just sum up the average of this. So this means that the accuracy is going to be the mean of the equivalence check of these predictions, which were just argmax outputs from each sample output and the class targets. So while accuracy is practical and useful, the metric that we are most interested in when training a neural network is actually the loss metric, since it is a, a metric of how wrong something is. And our goal is to decrease that loss. Now, how do we decrease that loss? Well, we know that we can adjust the weights and biases of a neural network. But how do we do that? So the optimization of weights and biases is the subject of the next and likely next few uh, videos. So stay tuned for those. Uh, again, if you are interested in this and want it in physical form, you can get the Neural Networks From Scratch book. You can get that at nnfs.io. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.